Everyone knows what Pokemon is. It's a card game, it's an anime, it's a... Uh... What is that? Is that a bed? It's also one of the most revered game franchises in history. I mean, a game where instead of fighting the monsters, you caught them into little balls and made them fight for you? It's genius. What more do I gotta say? It's freaking genius. genius. But when something gets as colossal as this series, you're bound to find some dips in quality here and there. And the Pokemon series has recently suffered from an extremely intense illness of Blandinitis Borishin. Which basically means, um, your new games are boring and I don't like them. Not every Pokemon game is created equally, and sometimes it makes you wish they really perfected the formula early on so that the games we see now in the series could closely follow their exam- Oh, hold on, oh. Yeah, uh, hold on, I gotta take this. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, alright, alright. Yeah, they already did. Pokemon Gold and Silver were made to be the ultimate Pokemon experience in the last games of the series, believe it or not. It was gonna be one, two, and we're out of here. And everything about it reflects that. There's just a feeling the Johto games give off of being larger than life, packed to the brim with content. There's a sort of finality to these games, if that makes sense. But money talks, and I think it said something along the lines of MORE POKEMON! The series got a soft reboot, some really great new GBA entries, and remakes. Red and Blue got a new coat of paint, new Pokemon, new features, and yeah, it was pretty gosh dang good. But it casted a shadow over the fan base, created by the pure, unadulterated hype for when the ultimate games of the franchise would finally get remade, Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. When these games were finally revealed, the world turned into a giant Pokemon... ...ball spun around, went on a collision course with the sun, and everyone's dead. We're, we're all dead. Or at least that's what it felt like. Special card packs, new merchandise, I remember the anime having a set of episodes that were basically all Johto nostalgia. These remakes were a huge deal to Pokemon fans young and old, and god damn, do they deliver. Not only do they succeed as remakes of classic games, they manage to stand at the top of their franchise as the shining examples for what every Pokemon game should strive to be. And yes, I'm in an open relationship with both of them, don't judge me. In the same manner as previous remakes, HeartGold and SoulSilver use the engine of the Pokemon games directly preceding them. The battle system is exactly the same as Pokemon Diamond, Burl, Platinum, with slight interface changes, a few altered sprites, all that good stuff. Battling, catching, trading, there's nothing here you haven't seen before, but the Johto remakes set themselves apart from the others through near-perfect execution. This game feels like a roller coaster of cool shit getting whipped at your face from the, the, the insane amount of content to the locales right down to your selection of Pokemon, okay? This shit's nuts! You have Toted Oil, amazing texture, Troy, but there's a tangible sweetness to it. A Cyndaquil with, um, hot garnish, and, um... <laughs> I'm salad man! <laughs> Oh, jeez, I'm like a lettuce kind of salad guy, I don't know. It's a pretty good lineup, and honestly, these games might have the most solid list of available Pokemon. The mix of Kanto and Johto Pokemon spread throughout this game are all certified classics. And you can even find a good amount of foreign Pokemon from Gen 3 and 4 in the postgame. My favorites, though, gotta be Tyranitar, Ampharos, and Umbreon. They all come from extreme, intense childhood bias, but Johto is home to so many great Pokemon that'll just make your stupid little head spin. Even the god-awful ugly Pokemon are awesome, like, how can I love this thing? I don't know, but I do! Not to mention the legendaries. These games go out of their way to cram as much legendary Pokemon encounters as it can. Usually you'll find like 3 to 7 legendaries in a single game, these ones have 11. On a single cartridge. And that's without counting the event Pokemon. Not only is Johto an explosion of great Pokemon, it has this unique atmosphere that's been amplified tenfold through the remake treatment. The region has a very traditional Japanese theme and takes influence in the rural side of the country, the Kansai region specifically. Places like the Iku Tree City? That I say? I don't know. They're filled with trees and ponds with small houses and buildings, just things representing Japanese culture. There's a sort of quaint countryside feeling to a lot of these areas. From the more forested areas to mountainous ranges, marine ports, and beaches, it does its best to resemble the geography of its country. It's Japan. I'm a weeb. D deal with it. And these areas emphasize the contrast in places like Goldenrod City, technologically advanced with shopping malls, radio towers, gambling corners, it feels very bustling and alive. But the remakes manage to convey these themes with such a clearer picture, it's almost impossible to go back to the originals. Unless you like that sort of thing, I don't know. Game Boy's so small, it's tiny, ugh. City themes replace the 8-bit music with more recognizable Japanese instruments, buildings have been improved with the country's architecture in mind, the amount of care into making Johto even better than you remembered, it's almost unreal. 
My favorite locations have got to be the Burn Tower and the Bell Tower. They're both staples of Ecritique City, with a lot of interesting lore around Lugia, Ho, and the legendary dogs, who are basically just ghosts that wander around the region. The mystery and ambience of these areas just make you feel like you're stumbling into something supernatural. It shows the parallel between these legendaries and something like old Japanese folklore, yokai, that kind of thing. But Heart Gold and Soul Silver really nail this up. What? What the? Who's that? Come on, who Pokemon? authorized an outbreak? People are trying to watch a v. It's Obama. Huh. Being remakes of the classic Gen 2 games, Heart Gold and Soul Silver add a few quality of life changes to the originals. My favorite addition has got to be one that's neglected in, like every other game, the ability to have your lead Pokemon follow you. It took heavy inspiration from how Pikachu would act in Pokemon Yellow. They're interactive and show off different moods, but it's programmed to be compatible with all 493 Pokemon of its time. This is nothing but a cosmetic change, obviously, but I feel like it increases the connection you feel with the Pokemon you choose to take with you. And why this feature didn't persist in the future games is beyond me. But hey, look at that, some brilliant diamond and shine and pearl. Story elements and progression are altered to make everything a more whole experience. Certain tasks are added to move everything along, like requiring the radio card to challenge Whitney and her <laughs> And the legendary events have been altered so that they're mandatory to the games. In Gold and Silver, you could complete the entire game without even once encountering Ho-Oh or Lugia. But the remakes make it so these encounters are necessary to challenge the Elite Four. Online functionality was added, similarly the Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, and things like the GTS and Plaza brought another modern touch to these games. Until, you know, they were re reduced to atoms by the Nintendo overlords? Anything else like minigames, new items, little bonuses, don't bring major shifts to the gameplay or structure, but the amount of fun and replay value they add to these games is really welcome. But as fun and expertly crafted as these entries are, I have a single pro- I have a single pro- There's one thing I don't like, alright? One thing! <sighs> the leveling. The game's progression is in stark contrast to other modern entries, and that's because there's more grinding than any other game in the series. It's a problem that I believe has been carried over from the originals and manages to show cracks of age in these otherwise stellar remakes. Pokemon has always been about leveling up your Pokemon and making them stronger, but the Johto games have very noticeable level gaps, so big that I feel like I was slowing the pace of the game by trying to match my team to these standards. When you reach this crawl of the game, beating wild Pokemon is not gonna help you. It'll get your levels up, but by then you'll be 80 years old and wearing a Pikachu diaper. The wild Pokemon are severely underleveled, so if you want to have an easier time grinding, abuse the Poke Gear. The Poke Gear is a swift army knife of utility with a ton of functionality, but its versus rematch feature is probably the most important. When you beat a trainer, you get their number so they can call you for a rematch. Trainer Pokemon have more XP than wild Pokemon, so rematching a ton of trainers should make leveling a little easier. But, and that's a big but these actions shouldn't be required in the first place. When creating a remake, you're given the unique opportunity to fix the problems of the original, and I'd say leveling was a pretty detrimental problem in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, especially when it could be solved by just raising the levels of wild Pokemon across the game to give more experience. It's just very weird. It's, it's odd. Some people feel like this adds a level of difficulties to the games that make them more engaging. And yeah, the easier difficulties of recent Pokemon games have been one of the many reasons why I've been turned off to the series, but this is just tedious busy work. It artificially creates the feeling that something is really challenging when it's not. The game just intentionally doesn't provide you with the tools you need to win. Huh, would you look at that? I complained about Pokemon without getting flanked. <laughs> Video game music has evolved to the point where the levels of a video game soundtrack and a movie soundtrack are comparable in quality, but when you had to make music for a little break that goes, it's a whole mess of differences. Epic music relied solely on the strength of their compositions because if they weren't absolutely top notch, they'd sound like this. Gold and Silver have incredible pieces of music, but hearing them revitalized on the DS is some Alakazam voodoo shit. Right now you're listening to the cave theme from the originals. It's a well-made track, a little rough around the edges, but it works. Then you hear something like this. It's smoother, it's refined. The reverb and the xylophone, the bongos, the sound really brings out the cave aesthetic. It's like a jazzy, classy cave with a nasty saxophone. 
When I hear these arrangements, I can't help but think about how nostalgic the DS sound font is, and how these sounds are what define Pokemon for me. And yeah, there's personal bias even in review, but you know what? DS was the bomb, and there's nothing you can say to wait. No, 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 no. Earlier in the video, I basically said that the Johto games kind of perfected the Pokemon formula. You wanna know why? You really wanna know why? Because it's got content for days! You go through the game, beat the champion, and now you have a whole other region to explore. You see Kanto a few years after Red and Blue, fight eight more gym leaders, and you eventually fight yourself from Red and Blue, or Fire Red and Leaf Green, or Pokemon Yale, you know what, whatever, it was still, still <laughs> Sure, the extra gym battles and the fight with Red kind of feed into the leveling problem. Red's super overleveled, and the XP grind is already so slow, but it's so cool. When it comes to content, later Pokemon games have been notably lackluster. The last games I truly played, Sun and Moon, which were perfectly fine games in their own right, felt like they had next to nothing in post-game content. I grind the battle tree and get bored in a few weeks. But if every new Pokemon game had post-game events that took you to regions from other games, or new islands and maps with all kinds of new Pokemon, the replay value would be through the roof. And no, I don't want to pay for that content, it should already be there. Okay, Sword and Shield, I don't even want to look. Get it out of my sight! But that's how I see Heart Gold and Soul Silver. They're games that are hard to put down for good, with a ton of fun crap crammed into them. And the fact that the later games don't follow in its footsteps in that way make me want to curl into a nest ball and rot away. But uh, hey, Legend Arceus, right? This looks like a perfectly new and fresh entry in the Pokemon franchise that won't be subject to a barren overworld or generic gameplay. Oh, thank god! Pokemon is one of those series you can't help but love. It's so approachable, immediately fun, and just a freaking blast. The memories I made with my teams through the years are so dear to my little trainer's heart. And the same could be said for anyone who's ever played these games. There's nothing more all-encompassing than the feeling of getting that perfect team, or being the champion, and hey, maybe even completing the Pokédex. I, for one, have not and it still haunts me in the dead of the night. But the thing about Pokemon is, I don't think the effort's being made to add more than what we already know. Because yeah, the feelings I described are all classic Pokemon, but it just seems like the recent games have been half-assed remixes of what we already know. You could bring Legend Arceus into the conversation, but that's a spin-off to me, like a uh, Poke Park. Remember Poke Park? Just me? To really add something to these games, they should have followed the precedent of these amazing remakes, because I want to travel to other regions, I want to catch a bajillion legendaries, I want to battle more player characters like Red, I want an app that's exactly like the freaking Pokewalk because that thing was cooler than cool. That's what makes Heart Gold and Soul Silver a cut above the rest, because it feels like the effort was made to make it stand out, and that's why I think they deserve the title of the most well-made Pokemon games of all time. If you haven't played these games, what the hell are you doing? Go out there, get some Pokemons catch a damn hoo-hoo for crying out loud, I don't know. And I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Wow, most well-made Pokemon games? Talk about bias. But you know what? They're the greatest, but they ain't my favorites. I like black and white better. <laughs>